welcome to chemistry world today we discuss about chapter 4 metals and non metals in your previous class grade 6 grade 7 you learned about something about metals or you learned about what are the different types of materials existing around you and their states also you learn the different natural process like rusting etc. In this chapter, we will go in depth of properties of metal and non-metal and how they are interacted with the different substances available in nature. If you observe these diagrams on the board and uh, if you able to guess what type of materials are used to make these type of objects. Yes, you are correct. In these objects, you can see some metals inside. For example, jewelry. So, what type of metal you use for jewelry? Yes, either we can use gold, silver. This is what bucket. Of course, today you are seeing the buckets of uh, plastic material. But if you see the, the ancient time, the olden time, then the people used to use metal buckets especially iron you see this one axe and if you see the axe okay see this part this part is also made of a metal called iron and what is this part of knife this is also made of a different metals okay here also you can take a iron a different type of iron so if you see all these objects in all these objects iron gold silver are involved and all these are nothing but metals so in this chapter our point of discussion is metals only now guess or think about some more objects where metals are involved now you think and tell me that whether all these metals have any similarity between them? Do all these metals shine? Or which metal is harder, which metal is soft? So to, to answer these questions, we should understand this chapter. So let me tell you about different properties of metals. All right, now if you see the properties of metal, Basically, the properties are two types, physical properties and chemical properties. Physical properties means these properties were able to see, were able to observe. And then chemical properties we are going to discuss. So, in the physical property, let me tell you the first property is lustrous. I'll just your vow you yes, lustrous property. What is mean by lustrous property? It means the metal is which can shine, which can shine are called lustrous materials. Generally, metals shine. Take the gold jewelry, is it shine or not? Yes, it is shine. Take a silver jewelry, is it shine or not? Yes, it is shine. So, lustrous is the common property for the metal or it is a property to identify the metal whether it is shining or not. So, generally all metals shines, but there is a question, which are shining cannot be a metal. For example, take mirror, mirror shines, but could you say that mirror is a metal here? No. So, my point is that metals have lustrous property where metals can shine. But the metals which are shining are all are all not metals. Now, you have to check that how many metals are shining. I will give some examples to you. Now, find out by yourself or observe them around you and tell that which and observe that which metal ha having lustrous property. Iron, copper, aluminium, silver, gold, etc. Try it. Now, the second physical property of metal, sonority, 
what is winter sonority understand carefully suppose i am carrying some uh, like 20 to 30 iron nails in my hand and mistakenly it fall down on the on the floor then what happened you will hear some type of sound some ringing type of sound generally any like iron metal or you can say aluminium copper metals when they fall on the ground you can hear some sound and that hearing of sound is called sonority metals peculiarly have this property that's the metals are used for bells in the schools also why don't the schools use the wooden bell because wood doesn't have this property so sonority is another special property for the materials with which you can find out that it is metal the next property malleability what is been the malleability you know when you see the metals like iron copper aluminum silver you will find them in different shapes and sizes also how it is possible sometimes you can find the iron in cylindrical shape sometimes you can find the iron in sphere shape sometimes in rectangular shape triangle shapes all these type of shapes are possible because of this another property called malleability of the metal malleability means the metals can be stretched and molded into different shapes so with this property we can understand that all the metals can be flattened into thin sheets suppose if you go to a, uh, a person who is making different types of shapes using metals and if you observe it suppose he want to make a shape using iron material and what he do you he, he will heat the iron material when it gets to high temperature then he hit on the iron material and mold them into different shapes so all this is possible because of malleability the next property physical property of metal is ductility ductility is another property to identify the metal is metal have you ever seen the copper whites or aluminum whites iron whites brass whites yes you have seen many times in your house if you see the electric electrification of your house all the electric whites which are insulated the plastic material so inside you can see the copper whites so some metals have the ability to stretch to longer in size and make them whites and that property is called ductility generally all the metals have this property but very popular and very demanding metals are copper aluminum brass iron etc next property electrical conductivity or electric conductivity what is property beats the property says that the metals have ability or metals can allow the current or metals can allow the flow of charges through it so that you can current can be produced at different electric appliances generally if you see the electrification in your house as we discussed earlier in the electrification they will use all metals only like copper wire if you want to connect different electric components together you have to use copper wires only which are insulated by some plastic materials let me give a small example to you suppose there is a electric bulb electric lamp now this is connected to this this has to be connected to a cell so this is 1.5 volts cell it should be connected to cell so that the bulb has to glow then what we do you don't connect this bulb cell using a normal thread is not possible then you take a wire what we say electric wire using the wire you connect to the cell 
तो ऑटोमेटिकली करंट फ्लोस एंड बल्ब क्लोज सो दिस वायर इज मेड ऑफ मेटल एंड दिस वायर अलाउज द करंट एंड दिस प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ अलाउइंग करंट इज कॉल्ड इलेक्ट्रिकल कंडक्टिविटी and all metals have electrical conductivity you can use copper you can use iron but generally we use copper for the electric electric wires and connectivity now i'll give some more examples to you try and find out whether they have electrical conductivity or not iron copper aluminum silver brass sulfur cotton i didn't check now you get a confusion how do i check electrical conductivity using sulfur sulfur is in powder state now how can you do a small idea i'll give you take a plastic straw and fill the straw with sulfur powder and keep the straw between the two uh, parts like cell and bulb and try whether the conductivity is happening or not so metals having electric conductivity as the metals are called conductors here one point i keep on saying that electrical wires are insulated by plastic material why it is so because as the current is passing through metallic wires and when you when you touch directly the metallic wires there is a possibility of electric shock so to protect you from the electric shock it should be insulated so the heart use insulating materials and we have many types of insulating materials like plastic i already told you cotton wood many you have but generally we use plastic because it is easy to reshape them so next physical property is heat conductivity heat conductivity what is meant by that see take a spirit lamp spirit lamp okay and uh, the fire the flame is coming like this and take a iron rod and put the uh, attach the iron rod to a stand like this now keep A small metallic pins, like all pins, we say, like this. Small pins using wax, so that you can attach. So pin one, pin two, pin three. Now, as soon as the iron rod starts heating, if you observe carefully, what happens? As of course, the pins will. leave the iron rod and fall on the ground you understand that second observation which pin falls first yes you are correct the pin number 1 falls first and then 2 and then 3 why it is so because metals have heat conductivity they can easily allow the heat flow so when the iron rod is heated from one side into the iron rod the atoms are gets vibrated and they will allow the heat to flow from one end to the other end as the heat is flowing in this direction so first of all the heat make make to make the wax to melt therefore the pin 1 falls and similarly pin 2 and pin 3 so that small demonstration explaining that yes heat can flow from one end to the other end and which direction heat is flowing in that direction only the temperature change or any pin falling can be observed and heat conductivity not only for iron rod it is for all metals take another example of uh, kitchen utensils nowadays if you want to fry if you take a a bowl type of utensil bottom of the utensil it is coated with copper you have two types of utensils available in the market but many uh, families will opt for the utensils which have copper coating bottom side why it is so because copper is a good conductor of heat 
so it quickly heat the utensil so that the food would be, food would be cooked in faster manner